Hello out there, it is Michael from Fujifilm. It's the middle of April 2023, and Fujifilm has just released its new firmware that allows direct uploads from the camera to the cloud and integration and compatibility with the Frame IO collaboration platform. This is something very exciting. We've been working on it for a few months, and I think you will find that the interface is actually really cleverly designed and pretty simple to navigate. But to help you with all that, I thought it might be interesting to do a Q&A with a typical photographer user. So let's go with the first question. Hi, Michael. I'm a very happy Fujifilm camera owner already. This frame I.O. thing sounds like it could help me with my clients. Um, how do I get started? Okay, so you're going to need to have a frame I.O. account, and that's fairly easy for you to set up. If you are a member of a qualified Creative Cloud account with Adobe, you already have frame I.O. included in your subscription price. If you are not a Creative Cloud member, you can purchase a Frame.io uh, account separately. There are a couple of paid plans that give you different options. There is also a free plan. However, the free plan lets you use Frame.io, but it does not allow camera to cloud uploads. So keep that in mind. More information can be found on the internet with Frame.io very easily. For hardware, you are going to have to have either the Fujifilm X-H2S body or the X-H2 body. You will also need to have the file transmitter hand grip to go with that. Now, it's not the regular battery grip. It is the FT-XH hand grip. And this is very important because the FT grip has a very powerful Wi-Fi antenna built into it. Uh, it also has a LAN port option, and it has a special dedicated USB-C tethering port as well. So you cannot use the standard battery grip. You have to have the FT grip. So keep in mind that both the camera body and the FT grip must have their own battery sources inserted. So the internal battery for the body and the grip must have at least one battery. It doesn't need to have both, but it does need one. For those of you that are uh, extensive power users, such as videographers, the FT grip does have a little door here that opens on the left side that enables you to put in a dummy battery P-tap adapter and the cable pokes through that door. And that enables you to run for hours and hours off of a large block battery. There is on the side of the FT grip a USB port a USB-C port, I should say. However, if you look carefully at the markings on the outside, it says the word mobile. This port is not for power input. This USB port on the FT grip is strictly to use for smartphone tethering, uh, which I'm going to explain in a minute. There is a USB-C port on the side of the camera body, and if it's inconvenient to have to separate the grip from the body when the battery runs down, you can always get power in and recharge the battery inside the camera while you're actually using it through this USB-C port, but not through the one on the grip. Lastly, you're going to need to get the firmware that's compatible for your camera body and also for the grip. You will have to update the firmwares for both the body and the grip. Now about the firmware, all future firmware updates for the compatible cameras and the grip will continue to have the Frame.io integration already coded into it. You will not have to worry about losing Frame.io with some firmware update that might come six or nine months down the road. I see on my camera now with the grip after I've updated the firmware, I have a uh, dedicated frame IO camera to cloud menu item. So how do I set it up and get all of this to work now? So you go to the right and you'll see the first line is called connect. 
So at this point, you'll have options for wireless LAN, wired LAN, USB smartphone tethering. Also, you'll see something that says get pairing code. I'll explain that, but until you've connected, that's going to be grayed out. So for most of you, you're probably going to be using a wireless LAN, like your home net, home Wi-Fi, your office studio Wi-Fi, or your phone hotspot, which is a wireless LAN. So simply go to the right and it will ask for a uh, how you want to connect. So you will have access point setting. That is probably the best way for you to go. You go to the right and I would suggest you use the manual setup, not the simple setup and select from network list. Now when you hit OK, the transmitter will start searching for available Wi-Fi networks or like I said your hotspot and you simply find the one that you want to use and just follow the prompts on the screen so you have OK to set it and then it will ask you to type in your password simple this is just like entering any Wi-Fi network once you have connected as soon as the registration is complete and a camera will tell you that. Once you press OK, it now immediately begins to talk directly to Frame.io. Frame.io is an internet platform, okay? This connection though from the camera to Frame.io is very, very, very highly secure. You're not just accessing the internet at large, you're only accessing the Frame.io server, okay? At this point, now, what you want to do is have your Frame.io window open and you want to go to the C2C Connections tab and on the right side there's three little buttons and you will select Get uh, Connect New Device. And you click on that and now the on-screen prompts are going to tell you what to do. On the camera, you will choose Get Pairing Code and the camera and Frame.io talk to each other and a six digit number will be randomly generated and it will show up on your camera screen. You enter that, that code on the FIO computer screen and you could also do this through your phone app, I forgot to mention, uh, the FIO phone app. You enter that six digit pairing code and at that point, Frame.io will authorize the camera into that project. So you see, it's not possible for really for anyone to just hack into your projects. You must, as the owner of the project, you must authorize a camera into that project. Now you can authorize as many as you want. At a big trade show, we had as many as 50 cameras all firing into the same project at once. Uh, you can very, very easily disconnect a camera to remove a camera from one project and reauthorize it into another just by following through the get pairing code steps on the app. Now, another option could be the smartphone tethering. So um, this particular item refers to a direct hardwired cable connection coming out of this USB-C port directly into your Android or iOS phone hardwire instead of using just the radio hotspot. So this is a little bit different than using your phone with your laptop by way of a hardwire because this is not a fully blown computer. So this is a special integration that our engineers have come up with. You enable your hotspot sharing on the phone and then just follow the prompts on the phone and the camera to simply trust each other and it works very well. Now why would you do that? Uh, because it's a more robust, uh, faster, more direct connection. Uh, of course it's not as user friendly if you're actually photographing at the time because you would have a cable coming off. But let's say you have completed a job and you are sitting in a coffee shop and want to upload photos afterwards this might actually be a faster way to go. 
I've noticed the LEDs on the grip blink different colors at times. Uh, why is that? Ah, yes, these little LEDs on the FT grip are very useful to tell you about the communication status of what's going on. Now, if you haven't connected to Frame.io yet or to any wireless yet, there will be no activity on those LEDs. But once you've set up a connection, the next time you turn on your camera, the camera will actually automatically try to reconnect to the last used network. So the camera will blink red and then orange while it tries to find that network and it tries to log on. Once it does that, the LEDs will turn green and they will blink. So that is very, very helpful. That tells you that everything is working well. While a file upload is in progress, the LEDs will alternate green, red, green, red, and that is telling you that it's actually sending files at the moment. When that upload is complete, it will go back to just green again. Thank you. Uh, how do I actually send images or movie files from the camera into Frame.io? All right, now the camera can be set up to either automatically send and upload stills and video files as you're working or not, and you simply manually select them one at a time or in batches and transfer them that way when you're done. However, before we get to that, the first thing you need to go is into the select file type line item and go through and carefully think about which file types you want to send to Frame.io. Now, you can use Frame.io as simply a backup, or you could use Frame.io as your primary storage area and use the card as a backup. Okay, so the camera will always write files to the card. You've got to have a card inserted into the camera, whether it's stills or video, to make the Frame I.O. system work. So it will always record to either the SD slot or the CF Express Type B slot. So rest assured, you always have at least that physical uh, recording available on the camera you might need to address what file types you will really, really want to send depending on the bandwidth available. Obviously, raw files are going to take more bandwidth and are going to take longer to upload than JPEGs. The full MOV ProRes files are huge. They're massive and they could easily take hours to upload. So you really need to consider whether that's something you want to send or not. It's probably better just to send up proxy files or the more compressed uh, other MOV MP4 type formats. So go through that connection and think about that. If an item is not checked, when you go into playback to send files manually, those files simply won't even show up on your screen. You will not, you will not even see them. I see that. After I tell the camera what kind of file types I want, uh, what happens after? You then would go into the upload setting window and uh, look at the second line down, the auto image transfer. Okay. Now this is exactly what it sounds like, auto transfer. By default, it's going to be off. If you turn that on, then every time you take a photo, the image will be sent up to the cloud. You take 100 photos, 100 of them are going to be sent to the cloud. This also is the same for video. Now, with video, it won't transfer in real time. It will not begin the transfer of that file until you cut the record. Okay, and then it will begin to automatically upload the video file if it's of the type that has the check mark next to it. Remember, uh, don't worry, you can restart recording at any time while it's transferring because it will be transferring the previously recorded file. Like I said, they go to the card first. Files always go to the card and then get sent to Frame.io. Relax, you have a hard physical backup in the camera all the time. Okay, now also take a look in upload setting. 
is something called image transfer while power off. Again, by default, this is going to be disabled. But if you enable that, then basically what happens is if you have a queue of files that's being sent, you can turn the camera off, but the transmitter and the body will keep sending all that stuff until it's finished. So you'll turn it off. It's going to give you a, a message on the screen, and then you will continue to see the LEDs blinking red and green, even though the camera is off until the queue is finished, and then it will fully shut down. What if I find myself somewhere where I just can't get internet in any way? Of course, what if you're working out in the desert or up on a mountaintop and there's maybe isn't even a cell signal? Okay, so wait till you come back somewhere in civilization where you can get access. And now all you need to do is go into the upload setting light item and the first one up there, select image and transfer. So select image and transfer basically puts it into playback mode with a couple of extra notations on the screen. And all you have to do is Put a check mark for each image that you want to upload or each video file. Hit the button to make it start sending. Boom, off it goes. Also, you can go into the camera menu in the button dial setting and on the last page find the playback ISO button setting and program that to frame IO transfer order. Now all you have to do is go directly into playback on the camera and by hitting the ISO button you can individually select certain files to be transferred. What happens if my files are still uploading but I'm finished my job, I've packed up and I'm ready to leave the location? The camera will remember where it is in the transfer queue for uploading. So if for some reason in the middle of a transfer queue you completely lose camera power or your uh, Wi-Fi interruption just goes down completely and you have no way, just don't worry. The next time you power up the camera, if you've changed the batteries or you get back into a new Wi-Fi area, uh, the camera will remember which files were sent, which are still waiting, and it will simply pick up where it left off. If it is a video file, it will remember where in that video file it stopped and it will pick up from that point and finish the rest of the video file. It's really cool in that way. What do I do if I change my mind about the uploads? Sure, if you suddenly decide that you want to stop what was being sent, just go to the very, very last item in the uh, Frame.io menu and go into Reset Transfer Queue and just do that and it will erase the entire transfer queue that you had currently enabled and you just go back to the beginning and reselect the files that you actually do want to send. Uh, this is all really great and it's working. Now, what if I have to change Wi-Fi networks? So with the current release of the firmware, if you need to switch not Wi-Fi networks, the easiest way to do this is to simply go back into the menu, go back into that first item for connect. Tell it to connect. Now it's going to try to connect back to the previously remembered Wi-Fi, okay? Like I said before, what you want to do is hit the back button and tell it to cancel. Uh, it may take about 10 seconds or so, but it will then stop talking to that remembered Wi-Fi and you will be able to access the network settings window all over and now input a new Wi-Fi address. Thanks for joining me. I hope I've addressed your questions on how to get the Fujifilm X-H2 and X-H2S cameras uh, ready for camera to cloud. There is plenty of more information both on the uh, Frame.io website and on fujifilm-x.com.